Hey, it's Entheogen, and today I'm playing Game Dev Tycoon, which is a sort of a, um, well, it's a, it's a game dev simulator, I guess you can say. Uh, I've been wanting to play this for a while. I played the demo when it came out, but I only recently bought the game. Um, basically, what you are is you're taking the role of a game designer or game developer, making video games and attempting to conquer the video game industry. Uh, click to start the game. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome. Welcome to Game Dev Tycoon. In this business simulation, you have been transported back in time to start your very own game development company right at the beginning of the PC revolution. In the next 35 years, you can build your dream company, create best-selling games, gain fans, and become the leader of the market. Okay. Before you can uh, start your adventure, you have to give your upcoming company a name. Company name. No, okay. Um, well, first of all, my player name is going to be Entheogen, of course. Uh, I'm a dude. Oh, I, I, I wait. I'm a dude. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the name of my company is going to be uh, Mush Mersh Room Games. Mushroom Games. Yeah. I'm going to put that Mario out of business. And then uh, we can, looks like we can change our hairstyle, who we are. Uh, none of those look, every, like, what is with every single guy having a mullet? I don't have a mullet. Um, I'm on, I mean, that's closest to my hair, hair color, I think, probably. I like that. I like that kind of turtleneck, that kind of uh, sweater vest combo there. That's good. That's me. It's very 80s. A tutorial. If you ever want to review the tutorial messages, then you can do so with the help menu. To access the help menu and other features such as saving, loading, and creating a game, simply press ESC. That's the escape button. To access the main menu. Okay. Congratulations! You've just started your very own game development company. At the moment, your office is in a garage and you are the only employee. But don't worry, many successful businesses have started out this way. Okay. Let's start developing your first game. Close this me message and then click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. Okay, so what we've got? Oh, I got, damn, I got an achievement unlocked. Sweet. Okay, so we've got a DeLorean here under our. That's our time machine. We've got, if uh, it appears to be a poster of Pong on the wall, and uh, oh, we're running out of time. We better do something. Uh, develop game. Uh, before development can begin, you have to decide what kind of game you want to create and give your game a name. You should also select which graphic technology your game should use. All right, so first of all, let me talk a little bit about the interface. You can click to bring up options. Up here at the top, you see it says no project. That's because we're not working on a game at the moment. There are four little circles. One says one that's orange, one says bugs. One that's yellow says design. One that's light blue says technology, and one that's dark blue says research. They all have zeros in them right now because we haven't gotten any points in those things. You'll also notice over here in the right corner we have a thing that says zero fans, Y1M1, that's because, and W4. That means it's the first year, first month, and the fourth week of the first month. So presumably January of 1980. And we have $70,000 in cash. Small unmarked bills. Okay, so we can also select what kind of graphical technology our game should use. Okay. Your options are initially limited, but once you have a bit of experience, you'll be able to unlock new options. All right, so game one. Uh, so we got we can pick a topic. We can obviously change the name. We can pick a topic, pick the genre, and pick the platform. Let's pick a topic. Okay, so you got four topics right now. Romance, fantasy, fashion, and sci-fi. I don't recall there being a whole lot of romance and fashion games, but uh, well, let's do fashion. Pick a so I mean what the, I don't know what the difference between genre and like, topic is, but pick a genre. It's going to be a fashion RPG, and we're gonna pick a platform. <clears throat> okay, so we've got two here. We got the G sixty four. We just got a development cost of twenty thousand dollars. We've got a market share of fifty six point two percent and genre match unknown. We've got a PC which got a development cost of five thousand dollars, but a market share of forty three percent. Now, <clears throat> this is a larger market share, but look how much more it costs. Right? I mean, I'm gonna go with the PC. It cost me ten thousand dollars. All right, the name of our game is going to be uh, uh, Secret 
of Couture. Because it's fashion RPG. Okay, next. <clears throat> uh, what kind of features, what kind of graphics do we want? Let's do, uh, it's an RPG, so you should probably have 2D graphics. Go ahead and start development. Okay, so my little dude there is going to start doing things. You'll notice, okay, game development runs through three stages. At the beginning of each stage, you can decide what areas of the game you want to focus on. Picking the right focus for your game greatly increases the points you generate. You notice that we got some points up here now, little dots started bubbling up. We got design and technology. Okay. Think about what areas are important for your game and decrease the focus on areas you think are less important. If you want to read a brief description of the different areas, please refer to the help menu. Okay, so development stage one, Secret of Couture, it's a fashion RPG. Um, story and quests, um, yes. Uh, engine, not so important. Gameplay, moderately important. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say mostly story and quests. Okay, so again, we're going to Game development has now started, okay. While developing your game, you'll see game points. You'll generate game points, which you can see bubbling up. Game points are divided into design points and technology points. The more points you generate, the better the game will be. For a time to time, there will also be bug points generated. These points become less likely once you gain experience. Bugs should be fixed before the game is released and increase development time and cost. Basically, we'll get bugs up here, and then we gotta spend a time debugging. <clears throat> okay, so we've got uh, so we got a lot there. All right, so now we're in development stage two. We have other options. We have dialogue, level design, and artificial intelligence. RPG, artificial intelligence, not so important. Level design, again, not so important. Dialogue's pretty important. All right, so again, bubbling up here. We got, so we got two bugs now. We'll have to work those out at the end. Um, tutorial, okay, during development, you can also pick select additional features for your games. Right now, you can only pick basic sounds, but your options will increase quickly. <clears throat> Selecting additional features make the game generally better, but also increase its costs. You also see the graphic type you selected when you define your game. This is just to remind you of your choice. You cannot change the type of graphics mid-game. Okay. Um, again, so development stage through. We got basic sounds. We got graphics. Uh, world design. Uh, graphics aren't, aren't really that important for an RPG. I mean, sound aren't that important. World design is pretty important, I think. And then graphics. I'm going to keep that where it is. <clears throat> Okay, so my guys can continue to do this. Running out of money over here. We're gonna be broke, living with our parents. Finish, okay. The development of your first game is now complete. You can press finish the button to publish your game, but only you should only do that once you fix the majority of bugs. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got something caught in my throat. Um, that's not necessarily true. If you're in a need for, to rush it out of the market, you can release it with a lot of bugs in it. I don't recommend doing that though. So now he's gonna do okay. Releasing a game without bug, without fixing bugs, can severely affect your ratings. So you should only ever consider that if you need the cash and can't afford to wait. That's what I just said, dude. All right. So now he's gonna go in here. He's gonna reduce those bugs. See if the number is going down. It also increases the amount of points we have for everything else. Anything else? Yeah, we got a couple more. Boop boop. And there we go. All right, finish it. <clears throat> the development of your game is now finished. While developing games, you gain experience and improve your skills. When development is complete, you will be presented with a summary of the experience gained. All right. Sweet. So we got 14 and 13 in terms of design and technology. We got bonus times 1.5. New topic, new combo. You can see the breakdown of all the stuff. We put a lot of stuff into dialogues and story and quests, so we got a lot of points there. So me as a person got that. You have the option of whether you want to trash the game or release the game. We don't want to trash the game, obviously, because we'll run out of money. Let's release the game. All right. So we got good. I got an achievement. Good judgment. <clears throat> Your game is now complete and will be handed off for publishing. You should see reviews and sales coming in for the game soon. Okay, let's take a look. All right. So while we're waiting for that, we're going to do a little bit of research. Research is important to unlock new options and make better games. You should try and save enough research points to be able to create your own game engine. This will greatly improve your games. Hint, try to develop games with different topic and genre combinations for a slight research boost. Is it okay? All right, so we can build a custom game engine when we have 50 RP points. Right now we've only got 16, so we can do a new topic. Uh, let's do horror. Start research. All right, the first reviews of our newly released game, Secret of Couture, came in. Oh, that better not be a one, dude. Five. Has its moments. Star Games. Falls a bit short. Informed Gamer. 
All right, quirky but good, game hero. <clears throat> and could have been better all games. All right, well, five, five, six. It was our first game, you know? It's gonna be, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be crap, but it's gonna be okay. After publishing a game, you can invest a little time to analyze your creation and create and generate a game report. Game reports are a great way to gain research points as well as valuable insights into what works and what doesn't work when developing a game. To generate a game report, close this message and then click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. Okay, we're researching right now, so we're gonna do that. News! Mushroom Games, a, new a newcomer in the game industry, has released their first game, Secret of Couture. The game received favorable reviews. No, it didn't. We received middling reviews. <clears throat> With such a good start, Mushroom Games are shooting game to gain fans quickly. All right, here's this up here. Now we're showing how we're making money. All right, Secret of Couture sold 4,833 4, units in its first week on the market. We made it to the charts at number 81. Now that your game is on sale, you receive the income from the game every week. You can see how well the game is doing by looking at the sales graph on the top of your screen. Secret of Couture is now so successful that we now have 35 fans. I'm doing better on this than I am my real life YouTube. All right. Okay, so we have finished the research. We have successfully researched a new topic core. Okay, so we want to do an, um, uh, develop a new game. Okay, so we need to do this. It's um, we don't want to do a. Let's pick a topic. Horror is new. Pick a genre. Um, let's try a horror uh, action game. And then we're gonna go we're gonna go with the PC again and it's not it's gonna be called horror action. It's gonna be called alone in the dusk. Next. okay uh, graphics yeah we definitely want to have good graphics for that because it's horror. start development. All right, um, so story quests, not as important. Engine, yes. Gameplay, yes. We want the gameplay to be really good on the horror action. Um, move this down a little bit, move this guy up a little bit. Yeah, like that. Okay. All right. So we've sold over 10,000 units on our Secret of Couture. That's pretty good. Um, I say we want pretty good artificial intelligence because the bad guys for horror action. Dialogue's not so important. Level design, pretty important. Okay. Sales record. Secret of Couture has reached a company sales record with over 10,000 units sold. This is an important milestone in the history of Mushroom Games. Yes, it is. Excellent. Excellent. My plan to dominate the game industry is coming to fruition. Okay. Um, world design, I'd say, is still pretty important. Graphics are still pretty important. Sound is also really important because it's like a horror. You gotta have creepy sounds and that sort of stuff. So, okay. Finish. Okay, so we gotta get the bugs out. All right. Okay, anything else? Okay, Secret of Couture is now off the mark. <coughs> Excuse me. Dang, I really got something stuck in my throat. Secret of Couture is now off the market. It sold 13,046 units, gener generating $91,357 in sales. Sweet. Industry news. Recent market studies indicate that the Gavador G64 is steadily outselling com competitors in the PC sector. Consumers prefer the lower price, greater availability, and a flexible hardware configuration over other home computers. Yeah, we'll see. We've been from the future. We know that the Commodore, excuse me, the Gavador G64 is not going to turn out and be anything. It's flash in the pan. We're going to stick with the, with the PC. Experts say this might spell the end of competing hardware manufacturers. Nope. All right, so we got one more technology. Let's do finish. Oh, we got two more. Okay. Finishing it. Alone in the Dusk is ready. I, and you can still add, add the name if you want to do it later on. So we got a new record in terms of technology. Got some more experience. Everything's going smoothly. All right, uh, release the game. And then while we're waiting for that, okay, we can't research anything yet, so let's develop a new game. Um, pick a topic. We're gonna do romance, and this is gonna be a um, simulation. 
and we're going to call it hat full o boyfriend if i could type that'd be wonderful all right and it's going to be for the pc okay and again we're going to use the graphics The re first reviews are newly released game Alone in the Dusk came in. Sweet. What do we get? Oh, tens. I saw some tens in there. Seven. Nice experience. Star game. Sweet. Six. I like it. Informed gamer. I'm seeing some tens. Big numbers. Enjoyable. Game Theory. Thank you, Game Theory. And a five. Oh, six. Quirky but good. All games. Okay. All right. So we're working on a hat full of boyfriend. Um... Engine, not really so important on that. Gameplay, yeah, mildly important. Story quests, pretty important, I think. Okay. Dang, we're doing a lot of good business on Alone in the Dusk. I want to get to the point where I can do a new game engine. That's what I want to do. All right. Uh, so this is a dating simulation. So we want to do dialogues are pretty important. Level design, artificial intelligence, not very important at all. You can put a lot of it into dialogues. All right, keep doing it, dude. Notice that we're not getting very many bugs. I like that. Uh, sound, graphics, pretty good. World design, not so much. All right, so there we go. We're doing pretty good on the bug front. According to rumors, the Japanese company Ninvento is planning to launch its very own home game co gaming console. Ninvento is known for the widely successful arcade game Dinky King. And his associate, Dottie King. <clears throat> Many industry experts doubt that home gaming consoles will take off, but we are eager to see what Ninvento hat will deliver. Man, these industry experts suck. Like, first they're like, oh yeah, Commodore 64, that's the wave of the future. NES, don't bet your money on it, it's, it's, it's just a fad. God, these guys are idiots. It's a good thing I've been to the future and know what's going on. So we didn't get any bugs, that's awesome. Um, I want to see whether we can get anything else in terms of technology. No... Okay, finish. All right, so bonus, new topic, new combo. Notice that Alone in the Dusk, number 48. So cool, level up on dialogue, sweet. Sound. Oh, so close to leveling up. Release the game. Release the hounds. The first reviews of our newly released game, Hat Full of Boyfriend, came in. Jackasses. Not much fun. Star games. Uninspiring. You're a bunch of jerks. Pretty bad. <sighs> Lame. Simulations games work well on PC. Why'd you give it a three then, all games? Alright, so let's do a uh, generate game report. Um, so why did... Let's look at Secret of Couture. And see... Select. I want you to generate a port report. Tell me what's going on with that guy. Alone in the Dusk is now off the market. It sold 15,716 units, generating $110,047 in sales. That's awesome. Okay, so we got some research work. Contract work. Hi there. I've just finished Hat Full of Boyfriend, and I think you have potential. Look, the reviewers didn't think so. I don't know what you think, buddy, but you're clearly full of crap. I'm in the contracting business and we could use skills like yours. If you're ever short on cash, just let me know and I will let you, if I will see if I can have some work for you. Jason. Doesn't have a last name. He's like Sting or Cher or somebody. He's just awesome. He's like, my name's Jason. People have heard of me. Okay. Contracts have now been unlocked. To see available contracts, close this message and then click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. So that's basically if you need to get money, we can do contracts. Our post-release analysis of Secret of Couture is complete and we got the following results. Fashion and RPG is a great combination. Never would have guessed it. Sound seems to be not very important for this type of game. Graphics seems to be quite important for this type of game. Platform genre match PC slash RPG is good. All right. Okay, so let's do generate another game report. We lost a fan. Ah, oh, crap. Jackasses. Um, 
We didn't get any fans from this game. Give me Alone in the Dusk. There's 131 fans of that one. People loved, people loved Alone in the Dusk. Game reports are a great way to gain more research points and new insights. It pays off to generate a report for each game you release. Now that you've completed your first game report, it's a good idea to look at the research menu. To open the research menu, close this message, and click anywhere on the screen to bring up the action menu. I don't care. Alright, so he's going to do that. We're not doing too bad. I mean, we're shipping a decent amount of units. Today, Ninvento has confirmed recent rumors and announced their plans to release a new home gaming console called TES early next year. The console features cartridge-based games and a uniquely designed controller. Look at that, the Ninvento TES. Why isn't it? Well, I mean, what does a T stand for? Okay, so we should now have a our post-release analysis of Alone in the Dusk is complete, and we got the following results. Horror and action is a great combination. Artificial intelligence seems to be very important for this type of game. Platform game, uh, genre match, PC action, good. Yeah, so I mean, that's pretty good. All right, so research to game report, had a full boyfriend. Do it. I want to find out why this one is such, people hated this one. People hated this game. Like we're losing fans, we're hemorrhaging fans because people hated Hat Full of Boyfriend. A post release of Hat Full of Boyfriend is complete and we got the following results. Romance and simulation, is a good combination. Sound, oh sound, we had the crappy sound. That's what was going on. That's why people hated it. All right, so let's develop a, let's uh, research. New custom game engine. Yeah, we're gonna do a custom game engine. Thank you. Um, from to Entheogen, all right. For these, these from Patrick and Daniel Klug, Greenheart Games. Hi Entheogen, we are the creators of Dame Dev Ky Tycoon and would like to thank you very much for purchasing, purchasing the game and supporting us. You guys are welcome. Uh, game Dev Tycoon is our very first game, and it means a lot to us that you are enjoying it. With your purchase, you make this our, you support our little startup, and this will hopefully make sure that we bring you more can bring you more games in the future. And I'm I'm ter I'm terribly apologetic that I'm butchering reading this stuff out because you guys really put a lot of heart into this. Seriously, you rock. Thanks, Paris. Uh, thank you very much, and have fun with Game Dev Tycoon. Dan and Pat, Dan, Patrick and Daniel Klug, Greenheart Games at www.greenheartgames.com. Go and buy their games if they have any other ones besides Game Tev Kaikun, which I don't know of. Man, we are losing fans. This is bogus. This is completely bogus. We are how many fans we're losing. Oh, we gained five fans. Oh, we're starting to get the fangirls, see, because they're like, oh, ha oh, hat full of boyfriend. Such a great game. Uh, so it sold, now off the market, we were just getting fans. It sold uh, 5,151 units. So it sold a third of what we sold for uh, Alone in the Dusk. Um, we're going to research a new game engine, and we're going to, I think we're going to make Alone in the Dusk 2. And then eventually Alone in the Dusk movie starring Tara Reid. Okay, you have successfully researched custom game engine. Sweet. Now you can create your own game engines. Okay, so we didn't actually get make a game engine. We just researched the ability to create create game engines. It's like how you have to research pottery before you can actually start making pots in Civilization. To get started, close this message and click anywhere to bring up the action menu. Okay, so we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to develop a create a custom engine. Okay, so you'll notice here we've got a list of all the things that we can do to um, add into our engine. It's going to be kind of expensive. It's going to cost us, if we do set the thing, we're going to do $90,000. Linear, so we can do 2D graphics version 2, $50,000. Linear story, $30,000. Save game, $10,000. People love stay, being able to save their games. So we're going to call this the uh, Dusk Engine. That's actually a really badass name. That's an awesome name. Create the engine, dude. You are now creating your own custom game engine. Once the engine is finished, you'll be able to use it when creating new games. Or we can lease it out to various first-person shooter makers and have them pay us for it. <clears throat> All right, so you can see this is taking time, as, but it does generate research points, which is great, because that helps us get towards our next thing we can research. Uh-oh, we're running out of money. We need to hurry up and make a game. Your new engine, game engine, Dusk engine, is now complete. Congratulations, your first custom game engine is now ready. You should try using your next game. We're not going to be able to do that because we don't have any money. We're going to develop a new game. Um, we need to make a cheapy game that's going to make us some, bo some boodles of uh, moolah there. Uh, pick a topic. We're going to do sci-fi. It is going to be a uh, adventure game. Sci-fi adventure game. Pick a platform. 
So we know that, okay, so here, this shows us the genre matches because we did the, the research. It's awesome for simulation and pretty good for action and RPG. Don't know much about adventure. We're gonna do that though. Um, we're gonna use the PC. I'm gonna, um, I'm not gonna use a game engine because I think that, how much did that cost? Oh, I guess it's the same. Um, we are gonna call this one um, Space Wars. Uh, okay, and we can do it for ten thousand dollars. So I, th I think it was. So right now it's fifteen thousand dollars. So we can start development on that. Space Wars. Okay, to the new the new, the new game platform TES by Ninvento has been released. Okay, so these are options we can pick. We don't have a lot of money right now. Um. That's the problem. So it's an adventure. So story and quests is important. Gameplay and engine, not so much, I think. Um, I'm going to include a save game feature just because I think people will like that with an adventure game. We are running out of money. We are wrap don't, don't sit there scratching your head, buddy. Get programming. I'm going to crack the whip down here and make you program. Oh, bugs. I don't want bugs. All right, so... Well, this is an adventure game, so dialogues are kind of important. Level design, there's not a lot of AI in an adventure game, so I think we can skip that. All right, go, go, go. We're just cranking it out. Okay, um, graphics not so important. World designer, okay, let's increase the sound a little bit. Uh, I need money, I'm running out of money. Money, 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 money. Oh lord, look at that! I got I got less than four, five thousand dollars left. Okay, uh, we're gonna finish it. Oh, well, the design is nice. Yeah, new record on design. Sweet, new topic, new combo. So we get a bonus. Oh, you didn't level up on that. Level up on gameplay, story level. All right, dialogues, level design, sweet level up, artificial intelligence, world design, kick ass. We are leveling up all over the place. I leveled up. Sweet. Okay, release the game. New research available. Game tutorials and mono sound. Sweet. Um, okay, the first reviews for our recently new released, newly released game, Space Wars, came in. I saw a ten. I saw a ten. Eight. Love it. Oh, they're they're loving this game. Cheapy game made on the fly. People love it. Adventure games work well on the PC. Informed says informed gamer. <laughs> game hero, get out of town. Seven. Played, played it for days, all game. So we got, I mean, if this these jerks at Game Hero had gotten their heads out of their tuckuses and, and actually played the game. All right, so sweet. Okay, so we need to do something else. Um, we only got 27 points. We can't build a new game. We can do some contract work. Let's try some contract work. Contracts are a useful tool to earn some extra cash when your balance is low and can also be useful to generate a small number of research points. Contracts require you to generate a certain amount of design and technology points before the time runs out. Decide carefully what contract you accept. If you miss the, de the deadline for a contract, you'll have to pay a penalty, so it's better to start out with smaller contracts and see how much you can handle. Okay, so uh, three weeks, five weeks. We don't have enough money to go for five weeks. <clears throat> three weeks, okay, that's a pretty small one sprite sheet software our staff needs to be taught how to use need needs to know our staff needs to be taught how to use these modern technologies yes so we're going to accept that contract it's kind of small but it'll <clears throat> hopefully allow us to do it come on do it do it do it do it oh space wars is doing buku bucks got it bam contract successful well done we will transfer sixteen thousand dollars your unnamed unmarked swiss account all right, so that was the first successful contract. Space Wars. Look at that up in the corner. Look at that. That look at that magnificence. Um, I'm gonna call that the end of an episode, and I will see you next time when we try and continue our quest to dominate the gaming universe.